Hey there, coding warriors. Welcome back to Conquering the JavaScript Interview. Today, we're going to be cracking the longest common subsequence problem, a brain teaser you're going to love for your coding interviews. We're going to quickly unravel how it involves comparing two strings to find the longest common subsequence of characters they share. I'm going to shorten that to LCS to try and make it a bit sh quicker to say throughout this video. But before we jump in, as always, quick shout out to Covalence and our community membership, which you can find a link down below in the description. For $25 a month, you get access to our Discord, where you can interact with me, other Covalence staff, alumni, other students, and get a helpful and positive and optimistic mentor along your coding journey. Access to all of our courses and any future courses we put out are automatically included in your membership for free. Uh, right now we have our Zero to Hero React course as well as our entire full stack program, 300 plus hours of video lectures, walkthroughs and examples and tons of real world labs that you get to build and help build out your portfolio and teach you how to be a full stack developer. All that is found in the description down below in the community membership link. So check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive on in. So to tackle this particular problem, the LCS problem, we're gonna have to discuss something called dynamic programming. Again, why this is such a classic interview question and this is something you should be able to define as well as give an example or analogy of so you can prove to your interviewer that you really know what you're talking about. So I'm gonna try and equip you in a way I try and equip all my students in our courses, right? So deep dynamic programming or DP is all about efficiency. To define it technically, it is a method for efficiently solving a broad range of search and optimization problems. It works by breaking down problems into smaller subproblems and storing the results of those subproblems to avoid computing the same things multiple times. If your interviewer is like, good job, you can regurgitate a technical definition, what does that mean to you? You would say something akin to the following because of, well, personally, my food service background, this analogy makes the most sense to me. Think of a chef who likes to prep multiple dishes. They'll tape multiple dishes and their ingredients and steps out onto their fridges, for example. They will then look at those multiple dishes and see that there are multiple shared ingredients between them. It's a smart way to save time and effort by go ahead and batch prepping all of your diced and minced onions, for example, so you can then share them across the dishes instead of having to redo that step over and over again for each dish, right? Uh, that just like in coding, helps us solve complex problems by breaking them down into smaller and reusable solutions, right? We're gonna see that with the LCS problem. Now, before I quick drive into some pseudo code here and begin coding, let's go ahead and cover the problem, which again, you can find a code pen linked in the description down below that gives you the full uh, prompt and code of it. You can always remove the function call itself follow along and I always advise that even if you don't know what's happening that you write along with me rather than simply copying, pasting and staring at a problem. You will learn more even if you don't know what's happening by writing it than just looking at it. So we're gonna be using JavaScript for this, no surprise there. The object is to find the length of the longest subsequence present in both of two given strings, order not being important. I'll go over that in a moment. So we're gonna be given two strings. We have to implement a function that finds and returns the length of the longest common subsequence or LCS between the two strings. We're gonna be using dynamic programming to efficiently solve this problem. We're gonna test it with a couple examples or you can always craft your own if you're feeling uh, creative. So here is a quick example and I do have some tables I drew out and I will actually be marking them up because in previous attempts of recording this video, I spend like 20 minutes describing things before I begin writing anything and it end up feeling Pretty disastrous. So in this video, I'm gonna try and be quick up top and get to some diagrams and drawing things out to solve the problem and then coding it much quicker and in the back end talking about all the technical stuff. So here, we're gonna take a look at a simple string right here. We have string one, A, B, C, string two, A, C. Right off the bat, I see a subsequence that they both share, which is A, B, which is A and C, right? Now, what I meant by order not being important. While A is index zero in both of these strings, C is index two in string one, and index one in string two. This does not matter. I don't care about their individual index positions in their respective strings. I simply care about, is there an A followed by a C in both of these strings? And there is, therefore the longest, or the LCS is two, and that's what this function would return in this case. Down here on A, B, C, D, G, H, and other string is A, E, D, F, H, R, ADH is the longest common subsequence or LCS between these two. We have, as long as, if we get rid of the B and the D and the G, then we get ADH, that's shared over here, where if we get rid of the E, the F, 
and the R, then they share ADH together, so the LCS is three. Similarly, down here, GTAB is present in string one. GTAB is also present in string two. If you ignore the Xs and the Ys, we wind up with GTAB, which is our LCS of four. So that's what our inputs and outputs are gonna look like. Now, in terms of actually, there we go, actually breaking this down. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy pen tool and this table right here, I took the time to actually draw out because in previous attempts at this video recording, which is like seven or eight attempts at this point, I need, I need to learn how to edit better to, get a, to avoid having to redo all these takes. But uh, in previous videos, I tried to write this out and in comments and it ended up being a disaster. This one's gonna be much better here. So I actually do the diagram. We're gonna make our function call with our example strings right here. And we're gonna do a second example because I wanna give you all the pseudo code of how to begin approaching this stuff in order to, well, solve this problem before I actually code it out. We're gonna be using a two-dimensional array, which is what this diagram represents. We're gonna call it DP, our variable name. It's gonna be used to track our progress. So remember, this is about a chef looking at dishes and seeing what shared ingredients they have. That's our LCS and what our dynamic programming is aiming to do, save ourselves some steps. This will store our long, our storing our L, our highest LCS we've computed thus far and adding to it as we discover more and more common subsequences, right? So the whole point of this is to store previous calculated results to save ourselves some recomputation and to be efficient, right? So we're gonna be doing some pseudocode, like I said, initialize a DP table that looks like this. I'll tell you why it has three columns and three rows and not two in just a moment. Uh, so basically it's gonna be based on the lengths of the strings. You're gonna iteratively fill the tables comparing all the characters. Now you come up, dude, you've been gone all day and on this attempt, my cat Percy is gonna come help describe what dynamic programming is to us here. Isn't that right, buddy? So you're gonna fill the table iteratively comparing characters. If the characters match, you're going to build upon the previously calculated result going, oh, our longest or our, highest LCS thus far has only been one. So we're gonna take that one we've been storing and add one to it because we've gotten a new character to get two. If there's a third matching character, we take the previously previous highest result, which is two, add one to it to get three. It's gonna build up the longest one we found thus far. If there is not a match, we're gonna carry the longest sequence so far. So we're gonna say, hey, what's our longest sequence we've seen so far? Two, carry that in if it's not a match, and we're gonna add one to it later. That way we're not recomputing what our LCS is over and over again. We simply carry it along and update it if we find matches. Therefore, if you iteratively build out the whole thing, then by the time you get to the bottom right corner of your table, it will have the length of the highest LCS we have found, and we will simply return that as our answer. So. For those of you that can work off some pseudocode and get cracking or have some experience in this, go for it. Otherwise, feel free to keep watching. And we're gonna break down some things by strings by example. So DP table is gonna be initialized the dimensions based on the lengths of string AB and AC, which are both length two. Plus one for the base cases. The base case is saying, what if the string is empty? We need to consider that in this case. Tell me my pen actually draws. Yay, look at that. That is a horrible zero. <laughs> Uh, this is the only problem with drawing. I'm not very good at it. So uh, in our we're gonna add base case. What if the string is empty and there's nothing to compare? That's something we have to consider in dynamic programming in this particular solution. So our base case is always gonna be empty strings. What if we had nothing to compare? We're gonna fill in zeros in our base cases since there's no comparison to be made. So this is what the initial table will look like. Now, this is what it's gonna look like to us mentally, but remember, in JavaScript code and console logs, all spaces will be zeros until we iterate and fill them in later. But in our heads, our base case is easy, we fill it in with zeros, and that should be enough to get going here. So this is what our table's gonna look like initially. Then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate over, say, string one. We're gonna iterate over string one over here. And we're gonna go from over here and begin comparing it to each letter individually in the second string of AC. And then we're gonna go to letter B and do the same comparison. And we're, like I said before, we're gonna carry over the results as we get them. So first thing, uh, string one, letter A, string two, letter A. Are those a match? Yes, they are. So in the event that it's a match, what do you do? You look at the previously tabulated result, how big it is, and you're like, okay, that was a zero. 
but so that's our highest LCS so far. So I'm gonna take the zero, add one to it, and zero plus one gets us one. And that's what we fill into this table here. Okay, now the next character, we look at the letter A, compare it to the letter C. Are those a match? No, they are not. So remember what I said, in the event they are not a match, you do logic a little bit differently. You don't just add uh, you know, one to get two over here. That doesn't make sense. They're not a match. What you do is you look one row up or one column over and see of these two values, which is the highest. Well, the one is the highest, so we simply carry that over, no computation necessary. So that's going to be a math.max, hint, hint. So we've carried over the highest value, and there we go. We've been, we're storing the highest LCS we've had thus far. Okay, then we're gonna continue on this process to fill in the rest of the table. I think you all already know this is kind of a simple one, but you know, that's the point of it, right? It's, it's nice and simple. Next, we go down yonder and look at uh, letter B. So let's go ahead and say letter B is now what we're looking at. And now we're gonna compare letter B or character B to character A. Are they a match? No, they are not. So what do we do? We get the max value from the previous call or the previous row. And the max value of those two is a one. There we go. Next, we compare B and C. Are they a match? No, they are not. Same thing as before. We look between these two and take the maximum value as our longest LCS thus far. And it's obvious that they're both the same. Therefore, either one is fine. And we get a one right there. And this is our completed table. Let me go ahead and erase some of the other colors here if I can do that without ruining this design. Here we go, let's go pen tool. And there you go. This is our filled out table. You look at the bottom right corner. What is the longest common subsequence they both share? It's just the letter A, AKA we wind up with an answer of one returning from this function call. And that is the correct answer. And there y'all go. That is all we need to do to figure this out. And now we're gonna do it with a slightly longer string and a different diagram. So let's go ahead and erase all the stuff I see on the screen here and let's go to the next one. So that was nice and simple. Hopefully you can see the logic here. On this one, I'm gonna move a bit faster. So again, we automatically see what y'all? We see two strings, A, B, C and B, A, C. Those are length three. We know with our base cases, we're gonna add one to each length and that gets us a four by four grid. So that's what we're gonna do there. So that plus one action happening, hint, hint. Now, uh, just like before, our base cases are all zeros. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in our table with the initial zeros. Remember in code, they will all uh, elements of these, if this is a two dimensional array now, uh, all elements of these arrays will be filled in with zeros, but for visualization, we're leaving them as blanks in our head so we can begin calculating how this works, okay? So first things first, R8, does A match B? It does not. So why did it thicken all of a sudden? I know there's a hotkey to thicken it. The, is it not the, hold on. Uh, I hate that it's gonna be uneven now. I don't know what hotkey I hit to thicken the letter. Rage, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not that important. So, okay, R, A, and B a match? No, you get the max between these two, which is still zero, doesn't matter, okay? Next, we have A and A. Are they a match? Yes, they are. Zero plus one gets us one. Are A and C a match? No, therefore we get the biggest value thus far we've calculated, which is, you guessed it, A one right there. And we're simply gonna continue this process on down the line. So, uh, do B and B match? Yes, they do. So we're gonna calculate the highest we've gotten so far, or we're gonna calculate zero plus one to get us one right there. Next, do B and A match? They do not. We're gonna carry over the maximum between these two, which is still a one. Do B and C match? No, so carry over the maximum value, which is still just a, you guessed it, a simple one right there. Then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next letter, which is C. Are C and B a match? No, carry over the maximum value we've gotten thus far. Are C and A a match? No, carry over the max between these two, which is only a one. Do C and C match? Yes, they do. Look at the previous highest result, which is a one. Add one to it to get two and return a two, saying the A and C is the same subsequence that these two share. That's the highest one. And like I said, a little bit faster, and that is our solution right there. So I know even though I mentioned I wanted to get to coding faster than my typical video content, which I tend to ramble a lot, not ramble, but like I tend to try and really 
explain everything and analogy and pseudocode before I begin coding. So in 2024, I'm gonna try and include more diagrams and interactivity up front and do a lot of MR explaining at the back end. So that's what we got going on here for our solution. This is how we're gonna be approaching this. So let's see how we can do this from a coding perspective, okay? So what we're gonna do is head back to our prompt window here and actually code out the way we have just seen it. So first things first, I'm gonna be using the lengths of the strings over and over and over again. So rather than having to remember to write string one dot length and string two dot length, I'm gonna compute them into some variables that make my life a little bit easier. We're gonna do m, which is string one length, const n, string two dot length. So we're gonna go ahead and just store those in variables for quick access a little bit down the ways. Next, we're gonna do some array shenanigans. But you know what, I'm gonna show you how this works before I make the variable in a console log so we can actually visualize the table being built. Now, let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's say we need a, we are two strings, just like in the simple example, where a C and a B, like in my table one example, A, B, A, C. No, it's the other way around. Not that it matters all that much. And remember, that generated a what now? A three by three, two dimensional array. So how is that gonna end up working, right? Well, we need to make an array from, this is a method that creates an array-like object and we can specify its length and it's gonna fill it in with, I think undefined if I'm not mistaken, or just a blank spot. So we can give it an object and tell it how long its length is going to be. Well, just pick one. I'm gonna say string one, which is length uh, two, Right, and we're gonna add one to it to get our grid, which is a three. So if I save that, there we go. There is our three right away, our three undefined, so it is undefined across the way, and that is gonna be our length of our grid. Now we're gonna fill in the other part, which is a second parameter we can fill in, right? We can pass in an iterable object, like an array map, over on into this second parameter, which is gonna be a function that we can say, hey, uh, I want this to fill in the rest right here with the following. So I'm gonna do some shorthand here. We're gonna say an array uh, from n plus one, my bad, which will be uh, string two, which is ac two plus one, which is three. Sorry, I'm already thinking of the code example here. So just like before, uh, the length of you know columns, rows, whatever, is gonna come from one string. The other string will dictate that length, which is three. So if this was uneven, if this was acc, for example, this would be a four, it'd be three plus one. But in our case, it's just ac, and that gets us two plus one to get us three right here. So look what that does for us right now. There we go. I wanted a sub array for each of the other ones. Our two dimensional array is now built out in this console log, right? This happens to have a bunch of empty items. So I'm gonna tell it to fill all spots with simply a zero. And there is the secret sauce code. So again, knowing these kind of array shenanigans are really good because it helped us generate this, uh, this dynamic programming table, the same style of grid we see right here in this picture. These are the exact same, our base cases, right? And like I told y'all, instead of blank spots that we have mentally, it's these zeros instead. So this is the, the secret code sauce to generate this. So simply this will come from string one length, this will come from string two length, and that has the whole thing pieced together. So I'm gonna remove this console log. We're gonna place it back up in the code block and say, there we go. Now, instead of simply three, we're gonna do length plus one to generate the grid of string one. And then we're gonna over here, this is what I wrote earlier that y'all saw, which is n plus one right here. I've written this out like 10 times to make sure I remember how to write it correctly while I'm, just, while I'm describing it. Because describing something while writing it is a skill in and of itself, y'all. So that right there generates our 2D grid, our table, our DP table right here that we're gonna store and calculate results in. And that honestly is a lot, of, is you know, the all the variables we're gonna need for this whole thing to get it done. Next, we need to, just like we did in our uh, code over, in our pseudo code over here, where I compared each letter individually and calculated a result, doing so, comparing each letter from each string is gonna be a nested for loop. This will go over the outer string, this will go over the inner string. So here we go. Well, outer and inner doesn't really matter, you just gotta pick one and be consistent. So we're gonna have this iterator be I, and we're gonna start it at one. I'll get into that in just a minute here. And we're gonna go to up to the length of the first string and iterate over each letter. We're wondering, hey Luke, why not do the zero with K? Why not start at index zero? Because remember, 
the zeroth quote unquote index is our base case, aka the empty string, which will always be zero anyway in this calculated table. Now, this one down here will be let j for the iterator so we don't accidentally use the same value. Same thing, as long as we're going to start j at 1, as long as j is equal to less than or equal to the length of the second string and iterate index by index per each letter. So there's our nested for loop structure to get all this work done. It's going to compare each letter of each string together. Then, like I mentioned in my pseudocode, we have to make a decision. Remember, either the strings matched and we updated our calculated results, or they didn't match and we grabbed the maximum from two, a previous row or a previous column and got the max from that. Just look at it in the tables, that is an if else statement we need to figure out down here. So how is this done? Well, what is the comparison? Well, is the characters we're looking at a match or not? So the characters we're looking at will be in string one and string two. Now we're not looking at the strings entirely. What are we looking at? We're looking at I, the character I we're iterating over in string one, and technically it's I minus one. Because remember, I'm starting these iterators off at one because again, our zero base case means that there is nothing to compare. But in the string itself, I'm looking at position behind at that letter. So this is our current letter lookup like this. So there's our I minus one and J minus one in this case, okay? because these iterators represent what I'm looking over in the grid. This represents the actual character I'm looking at. So that's what we're gonna have to do there, okay? So I goes to I is for the first string, J is for the second string. Now, because I started these at one instead of zero, uh, I have to simply subtract one from our current index position for the correct character, okay? But the reason I chose to do the minus one up here is because it lets me write cleaner code down here. Because now I need to update my table, right? Just like an over here, Zero, 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 those are all fine. But the A and A, I need to look to the previous spot, grab that value and add one to it. So, and I'm gonna say that this column, which is I, square brackets I, square bracket J, this accessor of this inner, this inner spot right here, that's what this represents. We're filling in that square. What are we filling it in with? Well, like I said, we are simply going to look back one position in each square and simply add one to it because that'll be our highest calculated one so far. So that'll be a zero plus one gets us one. Otherwise, just like before, we're gonna say, hey, the square we are filling in represented by these values is going to be the maximum from either one column over or one row over, so I can say J minus one. So between an I minus one or a J minus one, get the maximum value. And again, that's what we learned here. We simply look between these two and then brought it on over and that's all we did. So there is the calculation of adding one to a pre from a previous highest value. Otherwise we grab one of the highest ones calculated so far, because remember dynamic programming is about storing our subroutes, like sub complex problems or sub problems. So we simply go to our previous calculation, find the highest one, carry it over and call it a day. And believe it or not, that is almost done. All we got to do is simply return a value after our two loops are done, which is the bottom right corner. The bottom right corner represented by the length of string one and string two. That's the bottom right corner of our 2D array that we've calculated based on these right here. Uh -huh. So we simply return the bottom right corner and that will be the LCS. So in the event we call LCS with, let's do a simple one here. We had A, a B and A, C. We learned that was a result of one and that's exactly what we got right there up there in the console log. Let's go grab some of my other examples here. Uh, let's change string one to A, B, C. We get a length of two now because the A, C is the longest common subsequence or LCS of both. Let's grab example two, A, B, C, D, G, H. And the other one is A for her, A for her, A for her. Three, which is the A, D, H of both. So that's the LCS of both of those right there, looking good. And then we had ag tab. And I can't even pronounce this because it's not a word. But GTAB should be a length of four, and we got it, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. So let's see if I can get this in one OBS recording window here. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this is what we're looking at. This is the uh, solution to this 
problem. Again, it looks more advanced, but once you write it, once you've written it like once or twice, it actually feels fairly intuitive to write out. And if you can imagine the table that I gave you all and filling it in together, you can basically probably reason your way through it in code anyway. So the other important things I wanted to bring up here are, uh, remember if the characters are a match, why am I looking at the, the, the screen right there? If the characters are a match, this calculation right here, remember, uh, is simply one more than the value at accessing these previous spots. And it counts, it counts to the match and extends the length of that LCS is all we have it to do. Otherwise, we effectively use the math max to choose the longer subsequence between the one excluding the current character string one and the one excluding the character string two. Simply grab that maximum value and that's all we got to do there. So like I said, we initialize that 2D array with the const dp equals part, right? It's based on the lengths of the two strings. It's like preparing our workspace with all of our prep containers for making our dishes if we're going back to the chef analogy, right? Each combination of ingredients we're getting ready here. The iterative filling, the, uh, you know, the, the fill in right part right there and the looping through and filling in with zeros, ones, twos, etc. This is the real power of it, right? It stores the length of the LCS substrings from string zero to I minus one and string two zero to J minus one. It's akin to, again, our chef combining ingredients up to a certain point in each recipe and noting the best combinations so far. The real power of dynamic programming comes into play when we reuse these results, right? We look at previously computed values. The highlighted code on 43 on my window here, we look at a previously computed result, add one to it, right? And then otherwise, we grab the maximum value that we've computed thus far, the math max code. It's like a chef checking what has already been prepped up to this point in different dishes and using those best parts rather than starting from scratch on each new dish. And then finally, we build our final set of dishes by filling in each step of the DP table as we go along. Uh, simply looking in the bottom right corner of the table gives us the desired result, which is our LCS string. As a matter of fact, I think I can console log it, couldn't I? We can just console log before I return DP. And there you go. There is our set of values we've generated here. As we can see, we iterate on through this whole thing and we have filled in the table just like we had before to get four down there in the previously highest computed results because of our two dimensional array here, right? So yeah. Uh, in terms of big O notation, I feel that like this one is worthy enough to discuss that. The time complexity is going to be big O of M times N. So we have a big O here, notation of M times N. That is because it is all dependent on length of string one and string two. So that's where we're going to designate those as M and N, right? Uh, and we have a nested loop structure because we know that nested loops are typically quadratic in nature, right? So... For every character of string one, we have to compare it to a character of string two. So as they typically grow in number, the nested for loop number of operations will increase proportionally with the product of the two lengths because we have a nested for loop. The space complexity is going to be similar because of that 2D array. It's going to also be a big O of M times N. So both time and space have the same big O, which is M times N written right over there. Now... Uh, the size of that array really dictates the amount of memory this algorithm will use. It's directly proportional to the product of those two string lengths. So if we had to demo this on a graph and you're wondering, well, that's not one of the normal big O's we are used to, think about it this way. It's going to be quadratic, right? So it's going to be our quadratic one right there. Uh, that is because uh, the the complexity is going to be an n, well, quadratic as in n squared, which is this one right here, this, uh, this quadratic line. And remember, why is that the case? Well, because of the two inputs, the closer they get in length, the closer it is just to being n, like 5 times 5 or 5 squared, right? So they both have a string length of 5. That would be 5 times 5, which is the same as saying uh, 5 squared, hence the n squared quadratic complexity for both time and space, right? So the closer they are, inputs are in length, the closer they're going to resemble the quadratic complexity part of our curve here, right? So uh, LCS, besides interviews, you see it everywhere. It's used in diff tools for version control systems such as Git, which we've all probably have used and written Git diff plenty of times and things like that. 
Uh, differences in file versions. So I think like LS and things like that also use it behind the scenes. It's going to be used in bioinformatics, something my father actually works in, such as comparing DNA, RNA, and protein sequences. It's very common to see that there. Knowing this algorithm can provide you a significant advantage, not just in your interviews, but also while addressing real world computing challenges. So let me get back to the code here. No, don't say, hold on. <laughs> don't do that. Don't delete it. <laughs> Go back to the code here, and like I was trying to say, there you got it. We've delved into the longest common subsequence problem. This is a classic for a reason. We've discovered its complexities, its applications, and hopefully you come out with a stronger understanding beyond just interview preparation by this point. If you enjoy this in-depth look into it, make sure you like and subscribe for more coding adventures in this entire co Conquering the JavaScript interview series. Please leave any comments, questions, or thoughts down below. I enjoy hearing and reading from you guys. So stay interested, keep coding, and as always in these coding interviews, I'll see you in the next one.